Okay. I got this motor in the mail, an ELB member, and this thing is in horrible, horrible shape. Um, it's probably the worst motor anyone has ever sent to me. We're going to see what we can do with this. This piece here is what holds the brushes in position. These are the brushes. It's a little bit of a design I haven't seen before. This is definitely different. Um, this will be interesting to see. Oh, that should come out. Looks like it's probably somehow welded itself in there. What I'm trying to do here is separate the uh, stator here from this bearing in the back. It's frozen up, but I shot some WD-40 in there. I'm trying carefully to spread that. You like, probably can't see when I get the camera position, but it's a tight spot in there. I just took a screwdriver between the spacer. In the frame, I'm slowly trying to lift it out of there without causing any damage. There we go. Take that spacer off. This motor looks like it's been under water. It's pretty, pretty bad. The bearing seems to be okay though. We still have good movement there, but it was froze up, which would have burned this bearing out pretty quick and made a super noisy motor. This is our magnet. Let's get our brushes here. Uh, first thing we have to do before we go any further, because if this test fails, then the whole thing is a moot point going from here. We have to see if this piece is, is any good. These uh, these wires that are wrapped around here creates the electrical field. If any of the micro thin coating on these wires is broken, then it will ground itself out and there will be no electrical field. This can be clean, that's no problem. These are just metal plates that create the, the field. Um, but if we don't have an intact wiring for these fields, and this is never ever going to run. So let me grab my multi tester and I'll show you how we test these fields. Alright, what I'm going to do here, I couldn't get any readings. I think there's maybe junk in between here. So I went out there and sprayed it with some electronics cleaner real good. And brought it back in. I'm going to clean off these plates. A little 220 sandpaper. Be careful to stay away from any wires. Get as much rust out of here. I'm not ready to give up on this little motor yet. You cannot use steel wool for this because 
anything in a, in a motor because these motors use magnets. And those little bitty tiny pieces of uh, steel wool flake off as you're using it. And we'll get into these motors and then get into those magnets and get into those micro spaces that it needs to spin and destroy your motor. I'm looking at all the contacts here. I don't see anything broken. Where the wires that make these fields come in contact to the commentator. That gives me a little a little hope. Now I'm gonna go in and clean the channel between each plate. Make sure nothing's in there. Grounding it out. Alright. Let's try this test once more. Let's make sure the meter's working and it is. So we'll start. I always need to know where I'm starting at. Let's start on this one. I can remember what that one looks like. It's the worst looking one. Alright. See if this helps any. Alright, so I have a 3.4. Rotate it once. Two point two. I think we can probably do better than that. And two point one. Let's rotate it once. Two point five. That's pretty good. Next two. Two point two. 2.2 Come on. 2.2 Keep rolling it. Alright, I have some extra light in here. I've cleaned this thing up probably as good as it, it needs. I'm going to do a little bit more to it over time. But uh, this is smooth, so it shouldn't be any problem. There's no high places. It's got some pitting. As long as it doesn't have any high places, it will still spin with inside that, that fine, fine space that it has to do that in. Um, I've polished the commentator up as, as best I could. And uh, that should actually perform. So we will see. We will go on to the next part, which is here. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to take this out. I'm going to spray get all this dirt out with some electronics cleaner. And then all we have to do with this, this doesn't have to look perfect. All I'm going to do with this is clean the inside of these two magnet spa spaces here. This is plate stacked, plates just like on the other part. I just got to clean it out so that, once again, this, this will fit in there 
and spin without any confinement. Don't worry about it. Washed all this dirt off some electronics cleaner. I'm gonna take my little steel brush here, and without trying to hit these wires, I am going to smooth out those plates inside. Alright, we got the camera fixed, finally. So, I'm going to take this motor and finish it up real quick so we can test it. I'm just going to slide this cover over, line the holes up. That went on easy, still spins good. These long screws come in, and all they do is hold the Case together and also gives it a way to mount inside the light. Doesn't have to be super tight or anything. Pause a second. Alright. Well, something we have to keep in mind here is that these brushes have been reseated so they're not fitting snug against the commentator. So, whenever you fix a motor, it's always a little noisy at first, but the more it's run, the quieter it will get. Our goal here is just to see if this motor will run. So here goes everything. Very good. It's a very strong motor. Very strong. What we're hearing is the noise of the brushes. They're not, they're not smooth. As this runs, those brushes will smooth out and a lot of this noise will go away. A lot of people will a lot of people will take those brushes and they will round them out to fit. I've tried that in the past and it doesn't come out very well. It doesn't change anything. I found the best thing to do is just let it run and let the brushes seat. I would call that a success.